Why are physical properties of regolith important for Mars exploration? On May 1st, 2009, Spirit became stuck in cohesionless soil. Despite attempts to free the rover, NASA announced seven months later, in January of 2010, that it was effectively immobilized, but would continue to function as a stationary research platform. In order to prevent future mission failures, we must test the soil for properties such as cohesion and friction angle. One classic method of determining these properties is through the direct shear test. The direct shear test measures the maximum shear strength of a soil sample under a predetermined pressure. The sample is put under a vertical pressure, represented by the symbol sigma, and is sheared with the horizontal force, represented by the symbol tau. Determining Relations The test is performed multiple times with various vertical pressures. The data is then plotted with pressure on the independent axis and shear strength on the dependent axis. As the shear strength scales linearly with the applied vertical pressure, a linear approximation of the relation between pressure and shear strength can be made, which is shown in green. Inferring properties. Two physical properties of the soil can be inferred from this linear approximation. Cohesion, which is given by the y-intercept of the best fit line and is represented by the letter C. Friction angle, which is given by the angle of the best fit line and is represented by the symbol phi. Device to simulate the direct shear test. The following device was designed to mimic the direct shear test, performed from a remote location without a laboratory setting. A hollow box with the open end at the bottom will be lowered into the soil, where the descent of the box will fill it completely with soil. It is attached to a central shaft, which allows it to slide in one direction horizontally and is free to move vertically. The central shaft applies a vertical force to the box to generate the pressure necessary for the test. And then it applies a horizontal force on the box to generate the shearing force on the soil. The hollow box represents the upper container in the standard direct shear test, while there is no lower container as a part of the tool itself. Instead, the soil inside the box is sheared against the soil below the box. Isolating data. As the box is entering the soil, 
the soil on either side of the box will be clear. This lets the box move freely while it is shearing the soil sample, which allows us to accurately read the resistance of the soil. Two clearing flaps will lever the external soil out of the way, and the box will be free to move in the direction of the shear force. Levering the clearing flaps A levering mechanism is necessary in order to clear the soil. Springs in tension are affixed to the end of each flap and are released by a triggering mechanism which activates as the tool is lowered into the soil. Providing and measuring shear force. By using a system of rails, an actuator is connected to the shaft that provides the shearing force. The force provided by the actuator is equal to the shearing force on the soil, which is measured by a load cell placed on the end of the actuator. Providing pressure. To apply pressure on the shaft, which in turn applies pressure to the soil, weights are placed on a large plate which is connected to the shaft through a load-bearing structure. The shearing tool hangs from the structure which has a vertical degree of freedom. Weight is applied to the plate in order to lower the tool into the soil. The structure will not be present on the rover but is necessary for laboratory use. Size of entire structure To provide a sense of scale, a six-foot tall human is placed alongside the entire structure.
this project was funded by the Keck Institute for Space Studies.